What's cracking, big dogs? Welcome back to HQ. It's your man's Nicholas representing BDGE Fantasy Football, everything 2019 fantasy football. Today we're talking 2019 fantasy football rankings, more specifically 2019 fantasy football wide receiver rankings. You heard that, YouTube? Put that shit in your SEO and spit it out to everybody on YouTube searching for 2019 fantasy football stuff. We are breaking down an updated list of my wide receiver rankings. Like we did last week, we went with the running back rankings. We did the top 12 broken down into two different videos because you know your mans breaks it down with the big facts like no other. So these take a while for me to get player to player because I like to give you both sides of the argument. I like to play both devil's advocate and... What's the opposite of devil's advocate? Whatever the freak that is. So today we're going to break down my top six wide receivers for 2019 fantasy football. Let's get it. couple quick things before we get into the video if at any point you just want to hop into my top 25 wide receiver rankings there will be a link down below it'll be the first thing in the description probably in the first comment as well that will take you to a page where you can find my top 25 wide receiver rankings in standard half ppr and full ppr so you don't really have to listen to the analysis but i promise it is worth it for you to stick around i also want to know down in the comments uh drop your top six wide receiver rankings we'll say half ppr because that's usually what i advocate for for fantasy football so let me know your top six wide receivers in order for 2019 fantasy football at this point now we did this video like two months ago so i wanted to do an updated list although not much has changed on this front but there have been some movements around the NFL uh, in terms of the wide receiver position. So I thought I'd update it anyways and kind of give you a refreshed look. Number one wide receiver on my board, DeAndre Hopkins, Houston Texans. Nothing has changed there. He was the wide receiver one. He remains the wide receiver one. Last year, he finished only behind Julio in yards, 1,572. He played in 16 games for the fifth time in six years, finished as fantasy's wide receiver two overall, wide receiver four on a points per game basis. With Watson finally healthy for the 2018 campaign, Hopkins set career high in receptions, in receiving yards, and fantasy points. Hopkins had that like anomaly year back in 2016 where he caught 78 passes for 954 yards for touchdowns but from 2015 to 2018 if you exclude that one anomaly year of 2016 Hopkins has averaged 176 targets 107.3 receptions 1490 receiving yards and has scored at least 11 touchdowns and averaged greater than 17 half PPR fantasy points per game in all three of those seasons and I think that's exactly what you can expect in next year so he's a ridiculously safe first round pick depends if you want upside if you want safety do you have a running back that you're locked into <coughs> marlon mack in the third round that's going to help you win your leagues if so then you could probably go with d hop in the first round last year he set an nfl record catching all 115 of his catchable targets without a single drop he's as consistent as they come with arguably the highest ceiling and floor combo both season long and on a weekly basis probably not on a weekly basis considering Monte adams does on a weekly basis but with a qb like sean watson under center he slings the ball downfield he ranked fourth in air yards per attempt last year Hopkins not only operates as a possession receiver but he is a deep threat an end zone threat he does it all you don't need to think too hard about this one in my opinion now number two I know a lot of people like Devonta Adams as their one I definitely can't argue that like I said he's probably the highest floor player in fantasy football from both a weekly standpoint and a touchdown standpoint I think he's almost locked into 10 to 12 touchdowns new offense this year in Green Bay with Matt LaFleur coming in as a head coach uh, I love Devonta Adams he was my wide receiver too remains my wide receiver two here Adams tied Antonio Brown this year for the wide receiver one or in 2018 I should say in fantasy points per game never scored fewer than 12 half PPR fantasy points per game and there were games that it seemed like Aaron Rodgers literally did not look at other receivers besides Devontae Adams Adams had 12 or more targets in more than half of his games last year he had a 29.2 percent target market share on his team which was third in the NFL among wide receivers his red zone target share was 44.3 percent so of the red zone pass attempts in green bay last year he saw 44.3 percent this is not like an anomaly year either every time they're down in the red zone he looks to Devonta adams they don't have any other receivers there to compete with him down there jimmy graham trash the other young wide receivers, Equinemius St. Brown, Geronimo Allison, Jamon Moore, Marcus Valdez-Scantling, none of them are red zone threats, or they are yet to prove to be red zone threats. So as far as I'm concerned, it's Devontae Adams down there or bust. Adams just turned 26. It feels like he's been in the league for a long time, but 
He really has not. He's young. He's entering the prime of his career at 26. He's the number one weapon for the world's best quarterback. It's pretty simple, right? Adams, year to year, he's a lock for double digit touchdowns. And he's likely the odds on favorite. I didn't look at Vegas. I don't know if they have these odds up yet, but I'm, I'm sure he is the odds on favorite to lead the league in receiving touchdowns next year. What's more is I actually see some room for improvement, believe it or not, um, from both an efficiency and a volume standpoint. So let me rattle off some stats here for you. I was surprised to see that despite Aaron Rodgers, you know, being the quarterback there, he he obviously had a little bit of a down year efficiency wise. Devontae Adams's catchable target rate last year per player profiler was 67th among wide receivers, 53rd in target quality rating, 64th in target accuracy. So imagine if Aaron Rodgers didn't fucking stink last year. And, and despite seeing the second most red zone targets in 2018 with 31, right? That 44.2 or whatever number, 44.3%, 31 red zone targets led the league. He was tied for 23rd in the NFL in 10 zone targets. So when they got to the 10 yard line and in, he actually was not that targeted, which is pretty weird. He only saw eight of those targets. So perhaps, you know, a few more targets in the five yard line and the 10 yard line. And you're looking at a 15 touchdown plus campaign from Devontae Adams. Like I said, 26 years old coming into his prime. So D hop Devontae Adams, number three, Shimon, you know who it is. Julio Sticks Jones. Before we get into that, I do want to say, I want to plug my man at the Jersey Jungle. I know a lot of y'all got jerseys from him last year. He's my boy over on Instagram, at the Jersey Jungle. He hits you with authentic NFL, NBA, MLB jerseys for a very, 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 very low price. They're like starting at 40. Okay. They're not authentic. I know a lot of you people are going to be super fucking angry, but you know that one guy who gets like the jerseys from China and gets them for like $40 and they come out really, really, really damn good. And you can't tell the difference between whether or not they're authentic. This is what they are. Really, really swaggy. I know I got Yasiel Puig jerseys, not even on the fucking Dodgers. I didn't know that when I ordered it, but I still think it's pretty swaggy. So if you head over to the Jersey Jungle on Instagram, you can go instagram.com slash the Jersey Jungle or just search the Jersey Jungle on Instagram. He does not have a website. You have to find him on Instagram and then DM him, direct message him. So for you old folk, make an Instagram, go follow me at Big Dogs Fantasy and at Nick Ercolano. Then head over to the Jersey Jungle, cop a jersey for $40. The NFL ones, that one is from him as well. The uh, Julio one, it looks, it literally looks authentic. It's beautiful. Starting at $40, if you let him know that I sent you, you will get free shipping. I got custom ones as well. So if you got a rookie that you like or whatever, he can get that for you. The Jersey Jungle on Instagram. There's no website. You got to DM him. I don't think there's a website. I'm going to tell his ass to set up a website because I'm done dealing with y'all asking where they can find him. All right, back to Julio Jones. Though, he's still Julio. Ain't nothing changed. Fifth straight, 80 catch, 1,400 yard campaign. Jones topped 100 receiving yards last year in a league high 10 games. 10 of the 16 games, he went over 100 receiving yards. He exceeded 20 half PPR fantasy points per game in half of his games, eight of 16. That's actually a crazy number because you look at like, I always say the biggest advantage in fantasy football is having an elite running back, right? A, a top end, high end RB1, but they're not putting up much more than 20 fantasy points per game. Like Melvin Gordon was around, I think like 21 fantasy points per game and he was the RB3. Julio Jones did that in eight of 16 games. So he's giving you almost as much of an advantage or he did last year. Obviously he had some down games, but he did last year in half of his games. And they're talking about extending him, which they need to do soon. You know, at least give him that fat three-year contract or something like that. Now, the other change in this offense, of course, is that he has Dirk Cutter coming in as the offensive coordinator in Atlanta. And we already have a sample size of Dirk Cutter being the offensive coordinator in Atlanta with Julio Jones and with Matt Ryan. That was from 2012 to 2014. The passing rate, the percentage of plays, offensive plays in which it was a pass under Cutter during those three years, 63%, 68.7%, and 64%. Respectively, that was seventh, first, and third highest in the NFL during those years. Cutter loves to sling the ball and take shots downfield. I mean, how many times while Cutter was the head coach in Tampa Bay was Winston chucking it deep to uh, Deshaun Jackson or Mike Evans, man? I wouldn't be surprised if Matt Ryan and Julio were top five in both pass attempts and targets and pass percentage, like pass rate and deep targets or deep attempts, right? Which is obviously going to boost both of their fantasy numbers. And just to, you know, clarify, as we always do with the big facts over here, I wanted to break down exactly, you know, what Dirk Cutter's numbers were as the OC or the head coach. So over the last seven years, he's been either the OC, he was the OC in Atlanta, 
2012 to 2014. He was the OC in Tampa Bay for 2015, and then he's been the head coach in Tampa Bay for the last three years. So you see his passing rate in almost every year has broken 62%. There were two years. His 2015, his first year as the OC in Tampa Bay, was Jameis Winston's rookie year. So we're going to throw that down as a, kind of a scratch off. But if you look at all the other numbers, man, NFL rank in terms of passing rate, sixth, third, third, first, seventh, deep ball attempts, NFL rank fourth, third, eighth, sixth, 11th. And there were a couple down years here and there again, but for the most part, if you're looking at the averages, if you're looking at what we probably should expect, you're looking at top 10 in passing rate. You're looking at top 10 in deep ball attempts. You're looking at a lot of volume for Julio, a lot of volume for Matt Ryan, and a lot of that volume coming down the field. So big fan of Julio. Let's move to number four. Before we do so, if you are enjoying the video, all I ask is that you hit that thumbs up button. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you are new. We're breaking down everything 2019 fantasy football from now through the offseason, through your regular season, into your chip, into next offseason for Dynasty. Let's fucking get it. Number four. Yeah, hit that thumbs up, baby. Number four, Odell Beckham, Cleveland Browns. He was my wide receiver 10 last time I did these rankings. He has moved up. He is the one that has moved up the most from one ranking video to the next. He is now the wide receiver four, obviously due to the fact that he is on the Cleveland Browns, getting the ball from Baker Mayfield as opposed to Eli Manning back in New York. It's a monster upgrade, a monster, 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 monster upgrade. My concern for OBJ, however, was never his upside. If he was on the field, even while Eli was the quarterback, he was putting up top three fantasy wide receiver numbers. Even over the last few seasons, as Eli has been deteriorating, as he's been one of the league's worst quarterbacks in terms of accuracy and deep ball accuracy, OBJ got it done for fantasy when he was on the field. We don't predict injuries, right? It's it's impossible to predict injuries here at the HQ. I know that's, you know, I am only a doctor, but I can't predict injuries here. There is a, a site called Sports Injury Predictor, and you've probably heard me talk about this when it comes to OBJ this year. They're not 100%, of course, but in my experience, their accuracy of predicting injuries has been very very, very, very high. They are good at predicting, you know, in the ballpark of what we can expect for a player in the coming years based on, you know, the doctors that they have working for them, as well as the history of injuries for a certain player, their recovery time and things like that. According to Sports Injury Predictor, there is not a single fantasy football player next year, including Tyler Eifert, including Jordan Reed, including Leonard Fournette, that is projected to miss more games than Odell Beckham Jr. He is projected to miss 7.28 games, according to Sports Injury Predictor. That scares the shit out of me, and that is the reason why I cannot rank him in my top three, although a lot of people will probably like to get a little risky, throw him in as the number one ranked wide receiver. The upside, of course, is there. When I have Dr. Jesse Morse back on the channel in a couple weeks to discuss wide receiver injuries from last year, right? We dove deep into the running back injuries last year, which is probably the most valuable video I've put out this offseason so far. If you missed that, I'll link it up here, as well as down in the description. He told us last year to avoid OBJ. He was absolutely spot on when it came to the injuries, so I'm excited to see what he has to say about OBJ this year. He's missed a lot of time over his first five NFL seasons, and I, I just don't think that can go unnoticed in fantasy projections. And that's why I have him as wide receiver four. The ceiling is by far and away wide receiver one. But as I get more tuned in with fantasy, and I think I become a better analyst, more of me tends to start fading injury prone players, especially with your top picks. If you, if, if you lose your first round pick or your second round pick for the season, it is a monster hit to your team, of course. I obviously can't fault anyone for taking him here. I would rather just you know draft someone in the area like DeAndre Hopkins, who's missed one career game out of 96 games. Julio has missed just three games over the last five seasons. You get the point. These other guys, in my opinion, are a lot safer. Let's move on to number five. This is my absolute fucking boy. Juju Smith-Schuster. Who's with me on the JJ train, bro? Juju over Antonio Brown this year. If you are team Juju over Antonio Brown, drop a fucking woof woof comment down below. Also hit that thumbs up button while you're down there. He was my wide receiver, I believe it was wide receiver nine, possibly eight in my last rankings. He has moved all the way up to wide receiver five. The logic behind why people are fading Juju absolutely makes no fucking sense to me whatsoever. He gets the number one coverage now. He can't handle that. That's just bad analysis. That's just you saying things without any stats to back that up. He handled it just fine while Antonio Brown has missed games over the last couple of years. If you look at the splits, he has 26 games played with Antonio Brown on the field. Three games while Antonio Brown was not on the field and he got the number one cornerback covering him. 
Just look at the numbers. Fantasy points, up. Receptions, up. Touchdowns, one per game. Targets, up. Receiving yards, up. The other argument you hear a lot is what are they going to do with Juju in terms of where he's lining up in the formation? Is he going to play in the slot still or are they going to move him outside where he can't beat cornerback ones? Y'all, he just put up 1,400 yards and 110 catches as a fucking 21-year-old. And you're going to tell me he's about to regress? Stop. 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 Even if they do put him on the outside more. I dove into the big facts as we always do. One, they did sign Dante Moncrief. So I think that's good for Juju playing in the slot. The other thing is, look at the numbers. In games that he actually played more snaps out wide than he did in the slot, he averaged 17 and a half PPR fantasy points per game. That's in 13 games. It's a good enough sample size. And in those three games without Antonio Brown, he played on the out outside in more snaps than he did in the slot. And those were his highest fantasy points per game numbers of his career. So actually, when you look at the numbers, he was worse in the slot than he was out wide. A lot of those are gonna take into effect the beginning of last year when he was playing in the slot as a rookie and he wasn't getting much involvement. So I think those numbers can be a little bit skewed, but you're seeing the games in which he played out wide, the games in which he played without Antonio Brown, 17 and a half fantasy points. The better argument the only reasonable argument I see here is the offense overall taking a step back, right? Without Le'Veon Bell, without Antonio Brown. One, Le'Veon Bell, not in the lineup last year, did not affect their offense whatsoever. Uh, I think the offense, though, could take a dip in terms of pass attempts, right? Big Ben led the entire NFL last year with 675 pass attempts. The next leading quarterback was Andrew Luck at 639, who basically had, that was a full game worth of pass attempts, fewer than, than Big Ben. Getting rid of Brown, I could care less about the cornerback one covering Juju narrative, but it makes the offense worse overall, definitely. Juju will be fine though. Even if you think his efficiency drops, his volume is gonna be ridiculous. He had the fourth most targets in the NFL last year with 166, with Antonio Brown on the team with the second most targets in the NFL, 169. We take Antonio Brown's 169 out of the equation. Of course, Juju's not gonna get all of those targets. Let's say he hits 170. All he does is take four of Antonio Brown's targets, adds them onto his 166 from last year. I went back and looked. Over the last five seasons, there have been 10 fantasy wide receivers, or just 10 wide receivers, obviously, that have seen 170 or more targets in a single season. Of those 10, Nine of them finished as a fantasy wide receiver three or better. Most of them were wide receiver two or wide receiver one that year. If Juju sees four more targets than he did last year, he is going to finish as a top five fantasy wide receiver, no questions asked. We're gonna keep fucking going here. I got a hell of big facts just to spew out at you right now. You ready? He wins all over the field. He was top 10 in air yards last year, air yard market share, receptions of 20 and 40 plus yards. So he gets the deep balls. He gets the looks down by the end zone, second most red zone targets in the entire NFL last year, fourth most 10 zone targets in the NFL, which makes sense given he had the 11th best contested catch rate among wide receivers in 2018, a year after he had the third highest contested catch rate among NFL wide receivers in 2017. That red zone area is where defenses get tight, right? It's tighter on the field in that area than anywhere else on the field. And you need to have strong hands. You need to be able to make contested catches, which makes sense why Ben is throwing him the ball there. And that is why I'm so high on Juju because that's a huge area of possible production spike that I think we're gonna see in 2019 from Juju. Juju only scored seven times this year on 166 targets. That's a 4.2% touchdown catch rate. 4.2% of his receptions went for touchdowns. Last year, in 2017, he scored seven times on less than, on fewer than, excuse me for y'all fucking grammatical Nazis out there, 79 targets on fewer than half the targets he had the year prior. Same touchdowns, fewer than half the targets he had. I see that as a, almost a a definite increase in touchdowns. The seven touchdowns, I think he'll hit double digits without a question. So you're getting a ton of overall targets, a ton of them being near the end zone. He's very good at catching them near the end zone. So something's gotta give, right? This is what gave. He was tackled inside the five yard line last year, six separate times. Five of those came inside the two yard line. Hear that. He was tackled inside the five yard line six separate times. Five of those tackles came inside the two yard line. He could have easily had 12 touchdowns instead of seven. You're looking at him as a no brainer top five fantasy wide receiver. He's going to score 10 plus times this year. Brown is gone. I wouldn't be surprised whatsoever if we saw him have an absolute monster year, 13 to 15 touchdowns this year. Oh, and the other thing, he's been top two 
among all NFL wide receivers in yak yards after catch in both 2017 and 2018. People are still like, well, Juju is an elite. We got to see him really do it. Like I said, he had 111 goddamn catches and 100 and uh, 1,426 receiving yards at the age of 21. This is it. Juju already broke out. He is elite and he's here to stay. I don't know what more you need. Draft Juju in the second round every time. And the last man up on this list. Before we get to number six, the big dogs gotta eat draft guide. If you think I'm dropping big facts in this video, you are going to love the 2019 big dogs gotta eat fantasy football draft guide. The rookie dynasty guide is officially live right now. The season long guide will drop in July. You will get a discount, a pre-order discount price if you order within the next two weeks, bigdogsdraftguide.com. Not only will the guide have my top 250 big board overall rankings, all of my positional rankings by tiers, my dynasty rankings, my rookie rankings, my top busts, my top sleepers, my must draft players, <coughs> Juju, who was part of that last year, consistency charts, mad exclusive articles about the fantasy football industry. If you've enjoyed any of those interviews I've done behind the scenes, the big dogs Bible, which is like 8,000 words explaining to you best strategies at each position broken down for how to attack the 2019 fantasy football draft that you are in. It's got an unbelievable amount of value. So go cop that bigdogsdraftguide.com. You can get the Rookie Dynasty Guide, you can get the Season Long Guide, or you can grab both of them. I promise you will love both of them. Let's move to number six. That is Michael Thomas of the New Orleans Saints. He was my wide receiver five. In the last ranking video, he is now my wide receiver six. OBJ moved ahead of him. In PPR, full PPR, Thomas would probably be a little bit higher ranked here. And I would say if Michael Thomas was in almost anyone else's situation that's on this list, he would probably be up there for the wide receiver one overall in fantasy, which is crazy saying that because he's in the Saints offense, which is arguably the best offense in the NFL, as well as with Drew Brees, right? Just prolific offense. So why would I want him in a different situation? In my opinion, and you could fade this opinion if you want, but Drew Brees has just lost something off his deep ball. I just don't think he really has it anymore like he used to. And it makes sense seeing how he's like 55 years old. Brees' deep ball attempts have declined in four straight seasons heading into 2019. In 2015, he had 79 deep ball attempts, 66 in 2016, so 79 to 66, 61 in 2017, 55 in 2018, last year. So that's just not part of their game plan anymore. And last year, Thomas was actually a little more boomer bust than people realized. Just like his teammate Alvin Kamara, who, you know, maybe I shouldn't say boomer bust, but like it was more like awesome and then just not awesome. Thomas started off the year, like I said, uh, like Kamara on a blistering pace, but he cooled down tremendously as soon as they hit week four and into October and on for the rest of the year. You look at this graph, man. The number of 100 plus yard receiving games, double digit target games, double digit reception games, and 17 and a half point or more fantasy points games from weeks one to three were exactly the same for Michael Thomas as weeks four four to 17. So I don't know what their plan was. I guess as soon as Mark Ingram came back, they went a lot more run heavy. I, I just, it's hard to really pinpoint what happened there, but the numbers don't lie, man. Once they did, and they signed Latavius Murray, so I'm sure they're gonna have a very similar game plan. It is to get the ball out quickly. It is to run the ball. It is to pass the ball to their running backs. Those numbers over the second half, not even the second half, the second 75% of the year were just not good for Michael Thomas, right? A lot of people will just remember how good he was from weeks one to three, but he just was not really that good good from weeks four to 17. So I don't want to sound like I'm bashing Michael Thomas, but I need to explain to you why I have him ranked lower than Juju because I think that's going to be a very unpopular opinion last year. So I got to help defend myself, have my own bike because I know none of y'all will and hit you with the big facts. So that is why I have Michael Thomas ranked six, Juju ranked five, Odell ranked four, Julio ranked three, Devontae Adams ranked two, D-Hop ranked one, and those are my top six wide receiver rankings for the 2019 fantasy football season as of April 18th. If you enjoyed that, then you're going to enjoy Friday's video, which I'll be in Nashville for the NFL draft at that point already. Let's go. I will do rankings 7 through 12. Again, if you want my top 25, you can go get them at any time. It'll be the first link in the description. Standard, half PPR, full PPR. Go snag them. Go check out the draft guide, bigdogsdraftguide.com. You will get a 20% off the launch price if you pre-order it now over the next two weeks. Hit that thumbs up button if you enjoyed the channel. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you're new because we're breaking down everything 2019 fantasy football season forever. And make sure you check out the Jersey Jungle on Instagram. So I love y'all. That's really all I've got to say. And I will see y'all probably tomorrow. I don't know what videos I have going on right now. So peace.